Hey guys, welcome to Framelines, or as I should say, uh, how are you there? Well, welcome to Framelines, because I'm Irish. If this is your first time watching an episode, uh, this is a channel that me and Josh Edgoose run. We're both street photographers based in London. I'm Irish, he's English. We get along somehow. This, uh, this channel is, uh, is a place where we talk about our own street photography, uh, the street photography that inspires us. We take a look at photo books and we try and interview people. And we also talk about gear. So in this episode, I want to take a look at the Yashica Mat 124 6x6 medium format film camera. So I picked up this camera about six years ago. It was around the time when Vivian Mayer was becoming kind of a big thing. The documentary came out, Finding Vivian. And uh, I saw it, I got really into it, and I just love the idea of taking photographs in that way with a, with a TLR uh, camera in black and white. So I went shopping for a Raleigh Flex and then looked at the prices and went, nope. And then started looking at alternatives and this was one that popped up. Uh, a lot of people recommended it. And I just happened to find one in a flea market in Dublin. Uh, an old fella there was was selling it at a very reasonable price. It was in very good nick and he was very fond of it. So, uh, so I picked it up and I was far too confident about it because it took me about a year and a half to actually use the thing. It just sat on a shelf gathering dust and looking pretty. Then it was much further on again, like when I moved to London, that I started using it seriously as a proper kind of street photography camera. Ah, uh, yeah, so that's that's where I picked it up. And uh, just to show you the kind of photos I've taken with this camera, um, I put together a quick slideshow. So that's coming up next. So the Ashika Mat 124 is kind of a knockoff Raleigh Flex. So Raleigh Flex came out with this TLR twin lens reflex design. Twin lens because it's got two lenses. One lens is for looking through and it's slightly faster. It's a 2.8. So uh, it just allows you more light to view. So it's not as dim and it's easier to focus. That's why that's a 2.8, but this one is a 3.5. So I guess Yashica's whole kind of ambition with this camera was to put out a camera that was a, sort of a rival to the Raleigh Flex, only not as expensive and, uh, you know, with some compromises made uh, with the components and kind of build quality. There were versions before this. So you had the Yashica LM and the Yashica B and a couple of other models, but not until the Yashica Mat. 124 and the 124G, uh, do I think Yashica actually nailed it. Like it's got all the features you, you would expect to see on a Raleigh Flex. Uh, it operates very, very smoothly. And it's even got a light meter, which to this day works. The light meter in this camera works. Uh, I haven't even serviced it in six years and it still works. So just to cover a couple of features on it, um, the main feature, I guess, is the ground glass viewfinder, which is this here. So you focus the camera by looking down into the viewfinder and uh, using a focus knob and just kind of twisting the focus knob like this to get focus. 
feels very unnatural at first, but you get used to it very quickly. And because the ground glass is so good, it almost snaps into focus and uh, you can kind of feel it and you, you really, really adjust to it over time. And like I said, it does have a meter. So to adjust the meter, you just kind of crank these two knobs here and you just align the aperture and the shutter speed until you, your two dials align. Uh, you can set your ISO on it. Um, yeah, it's it's all good to go. You don't need a light meter with this camera. Sure, you can get a more accurate reading with a light meter, but this works fine. And especially if you're using black and white, where you do have some kind of leeway in underexposing and overexposing, you can definitely get away with the meter on this. So what are my favorite things about this camera? Well, the main thing is the ground glass viewfinder. It's a completely unique way to uh, to do street photography, to look into a viewfinder that's below your waist and you're focusing as you look down is a very kind of interesting experience. And the image you get on the ground glass viewfinder, the way it just kind of snaps into focus and the clarity of it, it's like looking into the world's best OLED display because you're seeing, uh, you know, you're seeing the world inside this little frame and it's just a really amazing experience. And in using the ground glass viewfinder, you're, you're sort of, you, you adapt to shooting very low. So you get a, a very kind of low perspective from sort of the, the waist upwards. And uh, that kind of perspective, I think is, is really interesting because it feels very intimate. It's, uh, it's like a belly button view almost of, of the world. And you can get very close to people with this camera without them really noticing because when you're looking down into a camera, people think, that um, you're just kind of adjusting settings or something. So you can get very close to them, take a photo, or you know, you can aim the camera away from them and uh, make it look like you're adjusting settings and then at the last minute, just move and take the photo. So the ground glass viewfinder is uh, something I love about this camera. The other thing is the, um, the lens. It's no Zeiss uh, planar or, or sonar, but it does have a certain character of its own. It's a Yashinon 80mm f3.5. It's not very fast, but when you shoot at f3.5, it does give kind of a very interesting character to the, to the image. Uh, the edges are kind of swirly and just kind of dreamy looking. But if you open it up to f5.6 or f8, it does get really sharp. It's a great little lens uh, for a fraction of the price of a uh, Rolleiflex. Uh, the fact that it has a meter means you don't need to buy an extra light meter. Um, and the meter generally works pretty well. I use the meter in this for pretty much every shot uh, that you've seen in the slideshow previous. Uh, what I might have done is uh, just overexposed it slightly. Uh, by like a stop or two, just to just to give it an extra bit of detail. But I, I pretty much do that with any light meter anyway. The shutter is almost totally silent. It's a leaf shutter. It sounds sort of like a Mamiya 7. It's just barely there. You would never notice it on a tube, for example. Even if you're sitting right beside me, I don't think you'd notice the, the shutter. And uh, I've taken a bunch of photos on the tube without people really noticing. So with all that said, there are a few cons with this camera. Um, it is prone to haze in the lens. So just kind of look out for that if you are picking up a copy. Um, I think people might also confuse the haze with glare. It has some like really serious problems with glare sometimes. So if you're shooting into the sun, you can get, uh, you can lose contrast. Um, what I have done is I just picked up a Bay 1 hood, uh, which just kind of screws off like this and screws on. I'm never going to be able to screw this back on on camera. <sighs> yeah, did it. Uh, another con would be it, you know, it's not the best build really. It is a bit janky. Parts of it are made from tin, parts of it are made from plastic, kind of cheap plastic. But saying that, you know, this has lasted for 50 years. Uh, I've been fairly rough in, in handling it. Uh, I've even let it roll down Oxford Street one time. It just kind of toppled down off a tripod and just rolled down the street in front of everyone, which was mortifying. But it survived. Nothing really broke. It skips frames now and again, but uh, I think that's just due to lack of servicing, which I'm going to get done shortly. Uh, hopefully I'm going to try and use it again over the coming months, just because I'm so fond of it and I haven't really used it in a while. So that is the Yoshika Mat 124, uh, one of my favorite cameras. Um, if you have any kind of questions about the camera, leave a comment down below. If you have any 
questions in general about about how the channel is going uh any feedback for us or anything like that just just leave us a comment uh like subscribe tell your friends do all that sort of stuff and we'll see you next time how are you welcome to frame lines that was uh that was a terrible irish accent for an irish man how are you welcome to frame lines ah Ah, oh, sure, how are you? Uh, welcome to Framelines. How are you there? Uh, welcome to Framelines.